Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. To prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries, we now call to mind our sins. And we apologize to God, saying together, I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. The Mass today, September 1st, is being offered for the healing of Mildred Reckla, Amy Reckla, Lucas Balangit, Eric Lopez, Norma Gaspar, Felicissima Castro, Kelly Tapacho, Zaid Zafo, Michael Mello, Vernon Pingol, Robert Tardichila, Perlina Quattrochocchi, Dennis Mark Rogers, Catherine Thompson, Teresa Oligario, Eveline Richard, Benon Fernandez, Isabel Martins, Aurelia Delara, Olivia C., Joe, Natalie Meyer, Chara Popo, Chelsea Dixon, Gabriel Lazari, Kiana Tran. For the intentions of Ethelbert Orquiola, Mad Soman family, Natalie Meyer and family, Ever Bartolo and family, Benny Garces, Evelyn and Eugenio Cruz, Catherine Thompson and family, all volunteers in the parish. For the souls of Alejandro Umali, John, all souls in purgatory, we pray. O oh God, who caused the minds of the faithful to unite in a single purpose, grant your people to love what you command and to desire what you promise, that amidst the uncertainties of this world, our heart may be fixed on that place where true gladness is found. We ask this for our Lord Jesus Christ, who is God, second person of the Trinity, who lives and reigns with you, Father, and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A first a reading from 1 Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, let no one deceive himself. If anyone among you considers himself wise in this age, let him become a fool so as to become wise. For the wisdom of this world is foolishness in the eyes of God, for it is written, God catches the wise in their own ruses. And again, the Lord knows the thoughts of the wise, and they are vain. So let no one boast about human beings, for everything belongs to you. Paul, or Apollos, or Cephas, or the world, or life, or death, or the present, or the future, all belong to you, and you to Christ, and Christ to God. The word of the Lord, thanks be to God. The responsorial psalm, to the Lord belongs the earth and all that fills it. To the Lord belongs the earth and all that fills it. The Lord's are the earth in its fullness, the world and those who dwell in it, for he founded it upon the seas and established it upon the rivers. To the Lord belongs the earth and all that fills it. Who can ascend the mountain of the Lord? Or who may stand in his holy place? He whose hands are sinless, whose heart is clean, who desires not what is vain. To the Lord belongs the earth and all that fills it. He shall receive a blessing from the Lord, a steward, a reward from God, his Savior. Such is the race that seeks for him, that seeks the face of the God of Jacob. To the Lord belongs the earth and all that fills it. Alleluia, alleluia. Come after me, says the Lord, and I will make you fishers of men. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. While the crowd was pressing in on Jesus and listening to the word of God, he was standing by the lake of Gennesaret. He saw two boats there alongside the lake. The fishermen had disembarked and were washing their nets. Getting into one of the boats, the one belonging to Simon, he asked him to put out a short distance from the shore. Then he sat down and taught the crowds from the boat. After he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, Put out into deep water and lower your nets for a catch. 
Simon said in reply, Master, we have worked hard all night and have caught nothing, but at your command, I will lower the nets. When they had done this, they caught a great number of fish and their nets were tearing. They signaled to their partners in the other boat to come to help them. They came and filled both boats so that the boats were in danger of sinking. When Simon Peter saw this, he fell at the knees of Jesus and said, Depart from me, Lord, for I am a sinful man. For astonishment at the catch of fish they had made seized him and all those with him. And likewise, James and John, the sons of Zebedee, who were partners of Simon. Jesus said to Simon, Do not be afraid. From now on, you will be catching men. When they brought their boats to the shore, they left everything and followed him. My brothers and sisters, this is the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. We continue to read from 1 Corinthians. Important given the number of times that wise and wisdom are used in this reading, that we reflect on what exactly is wisdom. Because unfortunately today, as I've mentioned to you many times, it's sort of a dead word. People don't know the word, they don't use the word. And I've said to you many times that when I'm doing funerals, I always have to mention the word wisdom about the person uh, in the coffin. Because in eulogies, the family members don't bring up wisdom. Most people don't know the word or use the word in any regular basis. And so it's important that we not lose the language of wisdom. Because ultimately, notwithstanding the circumstances of life, we're supposed to stay focused on the Lord. That is ultimately wisdom. There are many distractions in this world. And it's very easy to lose focus of the Lord or to presume that the Lord loves us, forgives us but not work toward establishing a connection with the Lord. That is ultimately wisdom, that one takes the narrow path, the difficult path, the path that leads us to connect to our Lord Jesus Christ, notwithstanding the storm around us, notwithstanding the uncertainty around us, notwithstanding we stay connected to the Lord. That ultimately is a sign of wisdom. This links us to the Gospel reading today, where, as Jesus calls the disciples, the miraculous catch of fish, as this is known, surprises them, and they don't know what to make of it. It is an unexpected thing, and ultimately it leads them to faith in Jesus Christ. But Jesus Christ has to say to them, don't be afraid. Because their first feeling of unexpectedness is fear. We, as we get to know the Lord, are better able to manage that fear. It can't be eliminated. The unexpected of life will happen. I was doing a marriage interview recently of a couple who's recently had a loss. Uh, The groom's mother died. And it's always difficult Uh, to enter your wedding day, such a joyful thing, uh, with the fact that you've just lost somebody like your mother who's very close to you, who you loved deeply. And in a deep way, that's where the test comes into play. Can we stay connected to the Lord? Can we love the Lord notwithstanding the loss? in this life that we have to deal with? Can we see beyond the immediacy of the loss and see, again, another sign of wisdom, with the eyes of faith, the resurrection? Can we see that, yes, she is missing here, but she is present there? Here she was weak and sick. There she is not sick and is powerful. Can we see there and not just here? That's the test that Jesus had for the disciples. And this is the beginning of their journey of seeing things differently with Christ present. This is what we have to teach as wisdom. This is what we have to do better with our young people. 
to get them to understand these things. And that's why I spent time with this couple um, in their marriage interview. The unexpected of life is going to happen. The question is, can we maintain faith notwithstanding? Can we maintain love of neighbor notwithstanding? And ultimately, if we teach them this, then we'll have taught them an important lesson in life. Because in the end, what we want for them is stability. We want the house built on rock. And the only rock is Jesus Christ. There is no other. And ultimately, a couple that's getting married is setting the foundation for their home. And we need to deal with that foundation right at the beginning to make sure that it's founded on rock, to make sure that it's solid so that when the storms do come, when the unexpected does happen, their faith will be maintained, their faith will continue. So we have a deep responsibility to make sure that people have a solid foundation, that people know what they're doing in relation to the Lord, notwithstanding whether it be a marriage or a baptism, any new beginning has to be founded on the rock, Jesus Christ. And this is where we can help couples form that foundation early, very early in their marriage. Bless you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we receive the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Bless you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we receive the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. O Lord, who gained for yourself a people by adoption through the one sacrifice offered once for all, bestow graciously on us, we pray, the gifts of unity and of peace in your church. We ask this through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. His death we celebrate in love, his resurrection we confess with living faith, and his coming in glory we await with unwavering hope. And so with all the angels and saints, we praise you as without end we now acclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna of the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Indeed, you are, you are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
The mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Tom Collins, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy, in a special way Alejandro Mali, John, all souls in purgatory. Welcome them into the light of your faith. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, our glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin, safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. Graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will. Who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you all. Let us offer each other now the sign. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May the body of Christ bring you to everlasting life. us pray. Complete within us, O Lord, we pray the healing work of your mercy and graciously perfect and sustain us so that in all things we may please you. We ask this through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you all, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. This Mass is ended. Let us go in peace to love and serve God and each other.
St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our defense against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who wander through the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Hail, Holy Queen, Mother of Mercy, our life, our sweetness, and our hope. To thee do we cry, poor banished children of Eve. To thee do we set up our sighs, mourning and weeping in this valley of tears. Turn then, most gracious advocate, thine eyes of mercy towards us. And after this our exile, show unto us the blessed fruit of thy womb, Jesus. O clement, O loving, O sweet Virgin Mary. Pray for us, O Holy Mother of God. Thank you all for coming. God bless you all. Have a lovely day.